So I had this funny title with a uh, term in uh, uh, inverted commas, and, uh, and that's this cure thing. Because um, in the introduction, Graham mentioned that uh, uh, CLL is the most common uh, leukemia in the Western world. The next sentence in all of the chapters, uh, it's an incurable condition. And that's what they used to say about childhood leukemia, but uh, childhood leukemia is now routinely cured. So uh, perhaps we just have to say that uh, all the incurable diseases are just precurable and, uh, until we get the right treatment for them. So, so many of you are very happy at the present time because the disease is controlled uh, and control is good. Uh, but eradication of the disease is better. And uh, if we can actually then return you to a state of normalcy, that would be even better still. So this is the FCR program. And the reason that I put it up here is because it's based on uh, some sense uh, that the, uh, uh, the alkylating agent is cyclophosphamide, which is the most flexible of, uh, of these, uh, this group of drugs, more flexible than bendamustine. And also, fludarabine inhibits uh, DNA repair in, in the uh, malignant cells so that uh, they can't escape the effect of the alkylating agent, and uh, fludarabine's very potent in its own right. No one really expected the addition of rituximab to be as, uh, as dramatic as it is in improving the outcome. Um, but I put this up because uh, these are a few slides that's, uh, that are going to be in a manuscript that we'll be uh, submitting uh, for publication in the next week or so. And this is the updated progression-free survival and overall survival of the initial uh, uh, 300 patients that were treated with the FCR program. And it used to be uh, in most of the slides that you saw there, there were survival curves in weeks or months. But as you can see, the survival curves in CLL are now getting out to years. It used to be up until the FCR program came along that the uh, median survival of uh, patients on clinical trials was about five or six years. And the median survival of this uh, uh, thing, uh, this group of patients, has not been reached. Now, the median survival is when 50% of the patients would be expected to die, and this is where the uh, survival curve looks. I've been asked to illustrate uh, what these little tick marks mean, and that means that these patients are still alive at the time that they're being followed, and every time there's a fall in one of the curves, that means that some adverse event has gone along, and this is how the, the statisticians uh, present it. Also, the median progression-free survival used to be around about three years on average, and now it's out to six years. So progress. But you'll also notice in that progression-free survival uh, group that apart from uh, one patient uh, late at 14 years, uh, almost all of the patients from 10 years on uh, have not progressed and have not died. And when we look at uh, the main reason for this, as uh, Dr. Halleck uh, illustrated, the patients that have a mutation of their immunoglobulin gene, which is a normal process in B cell development, uh, this group of patients has an outstanding long-term survival, so that the, uh, about 60 to 65% of those patients have never had any recurrence of the disease and when we measure in this mutated group to see if we can find one in 10,000 cells in the blood, we can't find any leukemic cells. So what's the definition of cure? Well, uh, if you said to someone at the start of the FCR treatment, would you be happy to be uh, uh, free of evidence of disease at 10 to 16 years? Would that be an acceptable cure definition? I'm sure most people would say yes. Uh, the fact that uh, most of the patients with CLL are in their, um, their Medicare eligible age group uh, means that uh, this has actually extended their freedom from disease for a long period of time. But you'll also see in the blue curve that there is a pretty relentless fall off in the, uh, uh, the uh, time to treatment failure or progression free survival. 
so that this is a group of patients that we really do need to develop uh, true and new initiatives. Now this was done before the era of having these uh, fish analyses. And uh, the term fish means fluorescent in situ hybridization. So uh, the problem is that CLL cells don't divide when, uh, when they're taken out of the marrow, so that you can't do a genetic analysis on the chromosomes because they're not unraveling so that you can count them. So that you had to develop particular unique sequences that you could layer onto the cells and see if they had the right number of little fluorescent dots. And the abnormalities that uh, Dr. Halleck mentioned was abnormalities in chromosome 11, 12, 13, and 17, and uh, the probes uh, measure all these things. So in the era from 2004 on, we had this information on the vast majority of patients, and during that time, we were trying to improve the efficacy of the FCR program. So we tripled the dose of rituximab, and it didn't work. We added mitoxantrone based on some data from, uh, uh, from our lab and from a clinical trial in Spain, and it didn't work. We added alentuzumab uh, or Campath to the FCR. It didn't make it better. We added a GMCSF to it, and it didn't make it better. So from that point on, we just stuck with the trial and uh, true FCR program. So the time to treatment failure by these fish groups uh, is illustrated here, and whether they were mutated or not. So this is uh, the test moving forward, is to whether the mutation uh, analysis worked. And the top curve is those that had the mutation. And as you can see, as time goes on, the curve is beginning to flatten out and has a very similar outcome to what we saw before. We have in the, uh, the, the pink, or perhaps ladies would call it fuchsia, and uh, uh, they, the patients in the fuchsia fail and uh, go on to other things. The green curve is those that have abnormalities in chromosome 11, and even though they have a very good response, as uh, Dr. Johnson mentioned, uh, they become negative for MRD, they still all relapse. And then there's a subset of patients with other changes that appears to be able to go on. And again, uh, because they respond again and again, many of these patients that are unmutated uh, actually do uh, very well because you can get another remission. But the group of patients that have the uh, loss of partochrome 17 uh, with loss of a particular uh, gene function called P53, uh, they stand out as something very separate. And the great thing about ibrutinib and idolalacib and ABT199 is that all of these targeted therapies work on the 17P group of patients. So we already have a better outcome for that group and uh, the next target group are the patients that have uh, loss of chromosome 11 to see if we can get to the point where we don't have any recurrence of that particular group. 